The length of a boss fight doesn't necessarily determine how good or bad it is, but when one takes its time, it's hard not to notice. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 of the longest boss fights in video games. Starting off at number 10 is the final boss from Asura's Wrath. Yeah, bosses in action games usually go down pretty quick. These games are paced much faster than a lot of other types of games. But if you factor in the cutscenes, which for Asura's Wrath are basically part of the gameplay, then this guy can take nearly an hour to beat. Asura's Wrath is basically entirely about spectacle. It's a crazy as hell game. It starts out over the top, and it just it never stops building into totally nuts. The final boss, Chakra Vartan, shoots at you with lasers that destroy multiple planets at a time, and it's bigger than a galaxy. Bigger than a galaxy, I said. You fight a lot of gods in video games, so this guy really, really plays up the omnipotent being part. There's not really much more to say about this guy outside of the spectacle, it's just a really long fight with a lot of different stages. By the end, it's, it's almost abstract. He's pulling all these fourth wall breaking tricks, like giving you false inputs for QTE sequences, which by the way is a real dick move. But as far as cinematic battles go in video games, it's gotta be one of the longest. At number 9 is King K. Rule from Donkey Kong 64. Donkey Kong 64 isn't remembered quite as fondly as other rare platformers from the Nintendo 64, but it's not for a litany of reasons, but rather one reason that basically extends itself through the entire game. It's a really tedious game. You could describe a lot of different parts of this game as very tedious. And that pretty much perfectly describes the final boss, King K. Rule. Rare has never been a stranger to long final bosses. The Gruntilda fights from both Banjo-Kazooie games, they were also pretty long. But K. Rule goes on much longer. He has five different forms, and of course, no checkpoints, with his final form being the most annoying, and requires you to pricely time and charge up a punch to properly get a hit in. So if you fail that part, and on your first try you most likely will, you start the battle from the beginning. Now it's not the longest fight you're ever going to fight in a video game, but it does feel like it. At number 8 is The End from Metal Gear Solid 3. Now this is one where they warn you up front. They say, this is going to be a grueling sniper duel, and it's not a joke warning. It's, it's the real deal. Your first time fighting this guy can easily take an hour of your time. What makes this fight so difficult and long is that it basically forces you to be really careful. You never really know where the guy is hiding in the multi-area jungle you fight him in. The only way to find him is to carefully observe the environment and find clues. So you're looking for ruffled grass or a little shine from his sniper scope. If he sees you before you can do anything to him, he'll hit you with a trank dart, run off, and hide again. That's really what makes this a battle of attrition. He doesn't even really try to kill you. He just knocks you out and keeps forcing you to restart if you're not careful. He's such a pain that the game actually gives you multiple ways to completely bypass the fight. For instance, you can kill him earlier in the story, or you can wait for him to die of old age, or even just change your console clock. In fact, when most people talk about doing this boss battle, what they're usually actually talking about is how not to do this boss battle. People do like skipping it. At number 7 is Kushala Daora from Monster Hunter World. Monster Hunter games are all about long battles. And these long battles always occur with giant monsters, so there's lots of scale. Sometimes lots of scales, if it's reptilian in nature. But we feel like Kushala Daora deserves special mention for not just being a hunt that takes a long time, but one that feels even longer than it actually is. What makes this Elder Dragon take so much longer to fight is its use of wind. It likes to fly up into the air and generate these enormous tornadoes that linger on the battlefield for minutes at a time. You get close to a tornado, you get thrown around. At times, this guy will have multiple tornadoes on the battlefield, and it makes it nearly impossible to get close to it. So you basically just have to wait. Like, the tornadoes disappear eventually, and you have to wait for that. And on top of that, at half health, it'll generate a windshield around itself that stuns you when you get too close to it. So basically being a melee fighter at all for this fight really sucks. Thankfully, it does have a big weakness, flash pods. You can use flash pods to just knock him right out of the sky. But if you're fighting a tempered Kashala, which is basically just a souped up version that gives you better loot, then guess what? It'll gain immunity if you flash it four times. So you're basically screwed. Monster fights in these games are usually really long, but against the Kashala Dora, they're just tedious. And number six is Dixidious the Invincible from Borderlands 2. Borderlands games love their raid bosses. 
Sure, the first game didn't actually get one until the add-on, the secret armory of General Knox, but that guy, Cromrax the Invincible, he must have been pretty popular because they really went all in on raid bosses in the sequel. All of these guys are pretty tough, but the worst of them all is Dexidius the Invincible. This dude's an overpowered stalker that, at least in true Vault Hunter mode, has, as far as we can tell, the most health of any enemy in the whole game clocking in at more than 13 billion HP. This guy's unique in a few ways outside of having a ton of health. I mean, it's the only raid boss you fight outside of a special arena, and then you fight this guy on the main map of Sir Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt, the third add-on. Also, instead of spending the usual 20 Iridium you normally have to spend to fight a raid boss, you have to spend around 90 to 99 to get this thing to appear. Last, it's damage resistant on a pretty high level, to say the least. And it takes reduced damage from pretty much every elemental weapon, so if you want to take this guy on, you need some kind of ammo regenerating ability or a weapon that will do that as well because you're gonna run out. Also, he's way faster than he looks, and he spits these orbs that you have these huge splash damage ranges with. They pretty much can kill you in one hit. So, this guy is just an all-around pain in the ass that takes forever. And number five is Overlord Ball from Disgaea D2. The final challenge at the end of pretty much every Disgaea game, the incredible anime and very bizarre strategy RPG series is the Overlord Ball. These games are basically entirely about getting your stats to insane numbers, but the stats on this guy are just, I mean, ludicrous. He's got over 100 billion HP. 100 billion! There's a possibility he has over 400 billion. And those numbers don't mean anything at that point, that's silly. These are obviously stats that go way over the normal limit of 99,999,999 with level 999 items equipped on him. And we're just saying numbers to sound absurd at this point, right? Combine that with some of his crazy abilities he deploys like being able to attack more people the second they're summoned, getting super high evasion on his third form and summoning copies of himself, you've got an all-around pain in the ass of a boss. And number four is Yeezmet from Final Fantasy XII, which is, by the way, a pretty unique entry in the Final Fantasy series, not just because of its more MMO-based battle system and unusual setting, but it's also unique literally just because of this guy. Basically, he's the final challenge of the game. He's the final hunt that only becomes available after completing almost all the other hunts. He's got a million HP, which doesn't sound too bad compared to some of the stuff we've seen on this list, but here's the thing. He's got 50 health bars. That's over 50 million HP. Like, you take him down a million, and, oh, hey, there goes that health bar. It's another one. In the original release of Final Fantasy XII, this guy would take often up to 12 hours to kill, which is totally insane, especially for a single player game. And he can be a real asshole too. At this point in the game, you're likely to be using the Renew spell to fully heal your party, and when Yzmet's almost dead, he'll pull a trick and cast Reflect on your party. So if you're automatically healing using Renew, unless you plan for it or think fast, you're going to end up casting Renew on a party member who's been reflected, and the spell gets deflected off of them and instead heals Yzmet fully near the end of an already insanely long battle. At number three is Nick's Avatar from Persona 3. The final boss from this mythology mixing RPG has a killer's row of annoying boss features that make it one of the most long and frustrating bosses around. It's long on its own, having 14 different forms, which basically amount to changing elemental weaknesses. But remember, in the original version of Persona 3 on PS2, you could not directly control your party members. So if they did dumb stuff, the fight would just drag on even longer. And they did dumb stuff a lot. Like, a lot. Worst of all, in its final form, it casts Charm on random party members. If it charms your healer, there's a pretty good chance they'll cast a full health spell and completely restore the boss's HP. So, to call it frustrating would be an understatement. This wasn't rare. This happened to me. It sucks. I just gave up and reset it. Like, no. And number two is Yggdrilus Zero from Xenoblade Chronicles X. This is a weird one because it's possible that this monstrosity could take upwards of a week or more to take down, but you might only spend minutes fighting it. This truly enormous monster is a nemesis, basically a super boss in Xenoblade Chronicles X, and you can only fight it during a squad mission, which has fairly short time limits. How it works is that everyone has to work together to take this big thing down, and you're only able to do a tiny fraction of damage to its total HP at any given time, which can be over a trillion, might I add, before the mission ends and the damage you did is sent to the server. Then the next person comes along and scratches off a little bit more damage, and so on and so on. As the game gets older, it's becoming harder and harder to take the guy down because fewer people are even attempting it. It's not the most traditional boss, but we thought it kind of bears mentioning for just how long it can take to beat, even if you aren't necessarily the one who's there the whole time. 
And finally, at number one is Absolute Virtue from Final Fantasy XI. Okay, so you know how MMOs like World of Warcraft work, right? One of their most unique and defining features is the Raid Boss. Basically a giant monster that takes a ton of people working in coordination to beat it. It's basically a thing that can only happen in a big, persistent world, and yeah, there's a lot of nasty ones out there. But at least in our opinion, probably the worst of all of them is Absolute Virtue. Though it doesn't really look like much, it's nasty, trust us. If you want to know how long this fight is, some Link shells, which are basically guilds like in other MMOs, have taken over 30 hours fighting him and not beaten him. So what makes this dude take so long to fight? Well, first, he's got a lot of HP, 100,000, which is, in this game, a lot. Second, he has auto regen, which is 500 HP a tick. In comparison, if you have auto regen, you get healed 1 HP a tick, 2 HP if you've got auto regen too. But here's the worst part. He's got a spell called Benediction that he can use, and wow, does it restore a ton of health. And when we say a ton, we mean like half of its health bar. And he can do it more than once. Just imagine fighting this thing for 30 hours straight and suddenly cast a spell and, hey, most of his health is back, if not all of it, because he does the spell more than once. Sounds like a lot of fun, right? Seriously, this guy was so hard and took so long to beat that even after three years, no one was able to beat it legitimately, at least by the developer's definition of legitimate. And they finally ended up toning it down, along with one other boss called the Panamonium Warden, because of a news story that spread about how people were legitimately getting sick and passing out while fighting these things. Still, even now, after they've toned it down, it's probably one of the most insane long boss fights in the history of boss fights. But what do you 